Hi, my name is Katie Jones and I am the Minnesota Green Corps member serving with the Clean Energy Resource Teams. And today I'll be talking to you about energy benchmarking using the B3 system. So we'll go through five areas today. First I'll talk about why you should care about energy. Then we'll go through an energy management strategy. Um, the third thing is that we'll be um, getting into the nitty gritty of benchmarking in B3 with a step-by-step -step process. The fourth thing, we'll be uh, talking about how to set up your, your um, B3 system and the next steps for getting into the system. And then five is actually just an extra resource. Um, it's implementing best management uh, practices on a, in a step-by-step -step process. Um, and these are, thing, these are practices that you can use in, um, in your buildings and then um, use the B3 system to track the progress of those practices. So first of all, why do you care about energy consumption? Well, there are of course a whole host of environmental reasons, but there are many other reasons as well. Um, for example, uh, many people want to move towards self-sufficiency in their communities. Um, energy management is a matter of national security. Um, using uh, energy responsibly uh, correlates with responsible use of tax dollars, many things like that. And of course the most uh, important reason is money. Um, if you're not using energy responsibly, it's essentially the same thing as throwing money into a trash can. This slide um, exhibits the, the energy cost trends over the past couple of decades. And it's important to look at this um, just for historical, uh, re historical reference and to um, gain a perspective of what is going to be coming in the future. So um, as you can see on this graph, the, um, the years of the past couple of decades are on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, you'll see the cost per unit of natural gas and electricity, um, natural gas in pounds per cubic feet, and electricity in cents per kilowatt hour. Um, and as you see on this graph, the general trend of the costs of both of these um, energy sources is, has been going up. And if you've been following the news lately, that those trends do not seem to be, uh, but the trend seems to be um, going in the same direction. So the, the point of this slide um, is that the earlier you start in managing your energy, the more that it will pay off in the long run. So moving into our, the second section, um, I'll be talking about how to manage your energy. And this is important um, for the, the main reason, the main sentence that I have on this slide. Um, the mantra of this uh, industry, I guess, is you can't manage what you don't measure. Um, and there are several examples of this. Um, for instance, a parent isn't sure or doesn't know of a student's knowledge until he or she gets a report card um, benchmarking uh, or setting a baseline for that student's knowledge. Um, and then thermal comfort is measured um, by a thermostat, and so you can quantitatively uh, measure and control thermal comfort um, through that measurement. And then building performance um, is very similar with that. You benchmark and um, measure energy usage and um, can therefore better control and manage it. So I've developed an energy management strategy with a step-by-step -step process that'll help you um, uh, better control your energy. So first of all, the most important part is to get the people involved. Uh, tools and um, and technology are only as good as the people who run them. So when you develop your energy management team, you need to identify all the possible stakeholders. The building managers are very important. The people who pay the utility counts are very important. Um, any administrators or city officials, maintenance workers, um, as well as the people who use the buildings um, are very important in this process. Anyone who has an idea or who is interested in helping manage the energy should be brought to the table. The second thing is once you've developed your energy management team, you should schedule regular meetings, either um, monthly or at least bi-monthly. Um, managing energy is often put as a back burner uh, um, issue, and it's not brought um, to the forefront. So it's very important to, um, to help hold the energy management team accountable and set those me regular meetings. The third thing is to determine if an energy management policy exists. Um, and if it does, um, you should implement it and follow it. Uh, if not, you may investigate developing one for your city or school uh, to help guide 
the energy management team. So once you've just determined if you have a, a policy, um, you, ne you need to set goals um, and hold one another uh, uh, on the team accountable. The most important part of setting goals is to make the, the goals concrete, easily understandable, understandable and comparable. Um, two units that I like to use are first this um, uh, energy intensity unit, um, which is generally used as KBTU per square foot per year. So it's energy use over the area per over um, a time frame. And this is a very important unit because it essentially normalizes for area and it normalizes for, um, for the seasons. Um, so you don't need to um, be comparing winter to summer because the, the, uh, the energy use during those times um, are completely different um, because of the, of, the, of the weather. And then with the area normalization, it's very easy to compare different buildings to one another. Um, the other unit that I like to use is simply um, a, a percentage. So if you can decrease your percentage of energy use, um, energy use in terms of this energy intensity unit, um, then that's another way to communicate to the public how well you're doing. And as I said, um, communicating to the public is very important. Um, it holds the team accountable because people in the, in the community are expecting to see results um, from these goals. And so it's important to use any um, media possible to make those goals public, using newsletters, um, signage, TV and radio announcements, and, your, and cities and schools' websites are, are very useful um, outlets. Um, in terms of signage, one of the things that I really like um, have been the United Way campaign signs. Um, they are a really good example for showing that the United Way has um, a goal, that a campaign is in place, um, what, how, full, how, how far uh, the, the community has to reach that goal, and what that goal actually is. So um, another thing, or a, that's a good example for what um, buildings um, can do for their energy use just using just revamping the signage a little bit. Um, I made this example just using a plug showing that the, uh, the goal is to reduce um, energy usage by 10%. So from 80 BTU per square foot per year to down to 72 BTU um, per square foot per year. Um, and these are very easily understandable numbers um, that, that the general public can, can grasp. And then finally, once you've um, uh, completed your goals, then it's important to provide fund rewards. Um, for example, uh, if you are a school, you can pr provide a, a limbo contest um, for you know, so the, the important people in the school, maybe a teacher or a principal. Uh, I had the idea of um, using a, a, a measuring stick um, and just hold that in the office with the, um, the goals. Um, written on that stick and so once the um, the goal is reached so down from 80 BTU per square foot per year to 72 then um, the principal has to you know limbo underneath that line and so that could be fun for students um, another fun reward would be hosting a tour of the building improvements um, this not only um, allows the building to brag about their uh, about their accomplishments but also gives um, other members of the community um, ideas for what they can do in their own buildings so finally as a quick review um, this is the energy management strategy that I recommend um, first develop your energy management team bringing all of the important stakeholders together second um, schedule regular meetings either monthly or bi-monthly um, to keep your uh, your team moving and progressing then investigate if you have an energy policy. Um, if so, uh, follow it. If not, you may investigate developing one. Uh, four, set goals um, that are easily understandable and comparable. And then five, provide fun, re fun rewards for um, the building, um, people in the building as well as the community. Okay. Moving on to uh, the B3 basics. So, B3 um, is a system um, that stands for Buildings, Benchmarks, and Beyond. Um, it is managed by the White Group, um, an engineering consulting firm, and um, it is paid for through the state of Minnesota um, Department of Commerce. 
And what this, this online tool does is it uses energy engineering algorithms to model how much energy buildings should be using based on current energy code. Um, and I will get into some of the specifics a little, little bit later on how that actually works. Um, so B3 is a fairly new system. Um, it was developed, uh, or the guidelines were developed in, in 2000. Um, in 2002, um, a mandate was um, put into law that says that all public buildings um, must uh, enter and manage their energy through the B3 system. Um, although it is not heavily enforced because there is no funding for it, um, that part of the law. Um, and then in 2004, the, um, the system was launched and there have been some really uh, cool redesigns in the past year that have made it much more user friendly. B3 is, um, is an online internet tool, um, as I have said. And so I'll be stepping through a couple of slides showing you how to navigate through the system. Um, so this is the overview uh, of, of the initial window that you'll get. So if you go to mnbenchmarking.com um, and type in your login credentials, um, a new window will pop up that looks like this. On your left-hand side, um, you'll see the, um, the list of public uh, entities that you have access to. Um, uh, the number two uh, bubble shows the organization summary tab. So this shows all of the energy usage for all of your buildings. The number three tab, uh, number three bubble shows the reporting tab, um, which will guide you to the graphs and reports that you can create in B3. Um, and then the number four bubble shows the list of sites or buildings that um, are within your organization and in the B3 system. So. Um, another thing I wanted to point it out, point out on this um, on this initial overview is that if you look at the right top right hand corner, you'll see that this is the organization view. So once um, you click into a specific site, then you'll be on the site view. So on this next slide, we're on the site. Um, we've we've clicked into a specific site. Um, and as you can see on the left-hand side in the column, we've um, gone into the public schools, Crosby Ironton High School, and that is the site that we're in right now. Um, so I'll go through all of the bubbles just once again. Um, number one shows the site data entry. This lists all of the, uh, um, the editable uh, content of the building. Number two shows again the reporting, uh, the graphs and um, the reports that you can create in, um, using the tool and but for this for the site view the reporting tool will only give you reports for the specific site and not for the organization as a whole um, the number three bubble shows the list of buildings um, that are located on this site um, for example a, a school building may have um, a, a modular space um, attached to it, attached to the actual building as well, and so you may want to list multiple buildings um, within that specific site. And that's why there's um, the possibility of listing buildings on this site page. Um, the number four, bill, uh, number four bubble indicates the, um, the list of meters um, associated with this building. So if you click on either of the, the buildings or the um, meters, you can click into areas of editable uh, data. Um, and we'll get into that in a second. So now I'll move into the six pr uh, steps I have for, um, for using the B3 system. The first most important thing is to click into a specific building and set up the building's profile. Um, here you'll be able to enter um, you know, the address um, the, and the square footage of the building. Um, and the most important thing is to set up the space usage of the building. So for example, this high school can use, has a space usage of high school as well as data center and dedicated kitchen slash food prep area. So um, those are the types of the way that the this building is used, and then the percentage of the building or the square footage um, can be entered here to indicate um, how much of the building is dedicated to that specific uh, space type. Then it's also important to um, 
put in the, the, how often the building is used um, for that specific purpose, how many hours per day, per week, per year, and then what percentage um, of, the, of that area is heated and cooled. Um, and it's very important that this uh, totals 100% at the end, otherwise the system will spit out an error for you. Um, once you've completed the space usage types, then you, you can click down at the bottom and lock this data so it's locked and saved. And it also um, tells anyone else who has access to a, this account that you know William Tollefson um, was the last person to edit this data so that um, it's better, it's easier for um, the stakeholders to communicate with one another um, about what's being entered into the system. So once the um, profile is complete, you can move on to entering um, the meter data. So as I said before, on that fourth bubble on the site view, you can click in to a specific meter um, and enter all of, the, all of the pertinent meter data. So you enter the meter name, um, what area the meter services, if, is it the whole building or is it just part of the building? Um, that's important for the system to know. Um, what your utility company is, the account number and meter, meter number. Um, and it's, it is vital to uh, put in the account number and meter ID um, just because in case the person who had been entering this data leaves for some reason, um, the, the next person needs to know, you know, is this bill that I'm getting and entering into the system, is the, are these actually matching up? Is this the same account? So it's good to verify that um, and enter that into, the, into this page. Um, the connection date and uh, disconnection date aren't as important. Um, but here is the nitty gritty of um, the, the meter data. Here's where you can um, put in your specific meter readings. So you'll put in the start date, the end date um, for each of the bills that you've received, um, the consumption, um, and the total uh, amount of dollars spent in that month on, on this specific energy type. Those are the four most important columns. Um, if you have uh, on your bill the uh, peak kilowatt demand charge, uh, the peak kilowatt demand and the demand charge, um, you can also enter those as well. Um, they may be used in further or in um, in future versions of B3. So it's pretty easy to add a new uh, meter reading. You just click Add a new reading in the bottom uh, left-hand corner, and a new line will pop up for you to enter each date. Uh, enter each um, line of data. Um, it's recommended that you put in at least three years worth of back data in order for the B3 system to have enough to run their engineering calculations on and set up a model to, um, to model how much energy you should be using. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. When um, you are, when you have um, gotten all of your utility data up to date, um, it's important to institutionalize the process of entering the data. Um, it's easiest if you get the accounts payable person or the secretary or the city manager, whoever sees the, the monthly utility bills, to um, just spend a few minutes per month whenever they get the utility bill to log into B3, type in you know four numbers, and then, and then they're done for the month um, for that specific bill. It's much easier than going back at the end of the year um, and trying to find the person who, um, enter, or who has the bills and to see if they even have paper copies or to go to the utility it's just, uh, and then enter all 12 months worth. Um, it's just much simpler um, to do it as the utility bills come in. So institutionalizing the process will make um, your life much easier. <laughs> The third step is to um, prioritize the buildings with the greatest potential for improvement. So you have all of the data that you needed to put into the system, and now the, now the system will actually um, give you something uh, um, to analyze. So here um, we have the organization view again. So we have the list of all the sites. Um, for this uh, school district, we have two schools, and we're going to compare those schools in order to determine, well, which building should we focus our energy um, management efforts on? Um, which, which building is more cost effective for us? So if you look um, in, in the red box, 
um, that column shows you the energy use intensity. So you can compare the two buildings just based on their energy use intensity uh, and determine I want, to I want to focus on the building with the highest energy use intensity because it'll probably give me my biggest bang for my buck. Um, another thing you can do is use this um, yellow box, which is the ratio meter to benchmark um, column. It shows the, um, a ratio of the actual use to the expected um, use. And how this works is the actual use is, um, is calculated from the, uh, the meter data that you've, that you've put in previously. And the expected use is um, calculated based on the, um, the, the space usage types that you've put into the building profile. So it calculates that a high school normally uses this much, uh, X amount of energy per square foot. Um, and if it uses X amount of energy per square foot if it was built to the current building code. Um, so it compares that number to, to the, me the actual use based on the meter numbers and comes up with this, this ratio. So if, you're, if your building is using the exact amount of energy that, it's ex ex that it is expected to use, um, you'll have a ratio of, a, of 100%. If your ratio is a greater than 100%, it is your building is using more than, it's, and than it is expected to. And less than 100% means that your building is doing great and um, it's using less than it's anticipated to. Um, just a couple of uh, notes on that. If, you're use, if you have a ratio less than 50% or greater than 150%, there might be an error in the data that you've entered. Uh, the system um, basically has said that, that those are, are outliers, if usually if, the, if um, the numbers are with outside of that range. So. It's important to double check your, your um, entries, your data entries, um, and make sure that those are all true. Um, but sometimes buildings are, th those buildings are actually that good or that bad. Um, in the case of uh, this bottom school, this elementary school, they, uh, they have done a whole lot of energy efficiency work and that their ratio is actually true. It's 38% of what it should be, or of what it's expected to be. And then this fourth box, or thir sorry, third box, just is a visual representation of, um, of the ratio um, meter to benchmark. So high, or lots of stars means that you're doing very well. 2.5 stars means that you're, um, that you're using the amount of energy that's expected. And less than 2.5 stars means that you need to uh, work a little bit harder. <laughs> So the fourth thing um, is to identify the energy sectors that ha have the greatest potential for you to save um, energy on energy use and costs. So first, um, you need to go to the reporting page, the reporting tab, and scroll down and you'll see these pie charts. Um, on these pie charts, the blue represents the electricity and a red represents natural gas, part of the pie. So as you look on the, the left-hand side, the dollars per square foot actual pie chart, this shows that 73% of the, of the costs that the, um, the, the school is paying towards energy, for its energy use, um, is going towards electricity costs. And only 27% is going towards natural gas costs. So if you're um, looking just to save money, then it makes more sense to do those projects that are um, electricity-based than natural gas based because they will provide a, big, a bigger bang for your buck. However, if your goal is to just save on energy itself, um, natural gas, um, you can see in the middle pie chart, um, actually uh, has a bigger share of the pie um, than electricity. And so if you want to decrease just on the energy uh, portion, the KBTU per square foot, then you should work on the, the natural gas um, projects. And a similar thing can be said about um, if you want to focus on CO2 per square foot, then uh, if you want to reduce that, then you should work on electricity projects because it has the bigger share of the pie. The fifth step is to um, track energy usage over time. So also on the reporting tab at the very top, you'll see this graph. Um, on the bottom, you'll see each month 
um, in which you have data. And on the left hand side, you'll see the KBTU per square foot unit, so the energy per area um, of the building. Um, in blue, are the blue columns um, represent the electricity usage in uh, KBTU per square foot, and the red columns are the additional um, natural gas usage in KBTU per square foot. So the total height of the column is the amount, a total amount of energy that is used um, per, uh, that is used in each month. And then the important thing about this graph is this dotted line. Um, the dotted line is the baseline year comparison. So if you look at the top right hand um, side, you'll see the baseline year here is set for 2007. So this means that I want to compare all of my data to, year, to the year 2007. Um, and if you look on the left hand side uh, of the graph, you'll see that in uh, November and December 2007, the dotted line line up exactly with the tops of the, the columns, meaning that those that, I mean, it was expected to use that amount of energy because it's the same, those are the same years. It's comparing itself to itself. Um, but with regards to all of the other months, you'll see that the, the columns and the line differ. This is because of um, different energy use and um, different uh, weather patterns. So the, the um, dotted line actually normalizes for weather using heating degree days and cooling degree days. Um, and so that variable is taken out. So this, the dotted line is actually just um, comparing based on energy use for, um, for the specific um, month. And so what the goal is, is to widen the gap between the dotted line and the, and the height of the columns. Um, if the, the columns are lower than, um, than the dotted line, that means you're doing much better, um, you're using less energy than you used in the year 2007. If the columns are greater than the dotted line in that month, that means you're using more energy than um, you did in 2007 with the weather variable taken out. Um, so this uh, helps you identify what, um, what times of the year you're using more energy um, compared to uh, pre uh, previous years. Um, and it also helps you identify if um, there are problems within your building, if your HVAC system is running amok, or if for some reason you had a stick fall through your roof and a lot of heat is esca escaping. Um, this may help indicate um, whether, where there are problems, um, but it also may just say, okay, we had a huge basketball tournament um, during the month of December, and so um, of course we used more energy because we had to heat the building longer, those types of things. Um, so it just helps you um, get a sense of what your energy use is over time. The sixth step is to use um, B3 extras. Um, these are uh, other tools that you can use within the B3 system, um, and they can be useful as you uh, as you manage your energy. The um, first tool is the versioning um, software, um, which you can use when you add or renovate um, space within the buildings. So you essentially create a new version of the buildings, and that way you, all of your meter data um, comes with you when you create that new version and um, is uh, calculated accordingly um, to compare. So you can continue ca comparing your building um, across time. The second tool is the Energy Star uh, certification and rating that the, um, well, I guess not a certification, but it gives you a rating for Energy Star. Um, and Energy Star is the EPA's energy rating system. Um, it gives you a score um, based on statistically representative models that are used to compare your building against similar buildings from a national survey conducted by the Department of Energy's Energy Information Administration. So uh, this is a really, um, useful uh, rating because it can give you, um, you can apply for a certification um, for your building and you can leverage that certification to help you, uh, you know, publicize your, your actions, um, to give you more clout, um, uh, and to help say that the things that you are doing in this one building should be expanded and done on other buildings because it's obviously working in this building. Um, it, the certification just helps you um, move in progress, uh, progress your uh, actions forward. So essentially, um, if you go to the Energy Star uh, 
button up on your uh, organization screen. You'll see your list of buildings and um, if they can be rated with an Energy Star rating. Um, an Energy Star rating of over 75 um, qualifies your building for um, certification. Um, but only some buildings are able to um, be Energy Star rated just due to the Energy Star system. So that's why this fire station um, can, does not have an Energy Star rating. So in review, um, the six steps for using B3 are to enter complete building profile data. Um, the second thing is to enter complete utility data, so all of the meter readings, um, going back at least three years if possible. The fourth thing is to then start analyzing the data from, B, or sorry, third thing is to start analyzing um, the information from B3 to determine a focus building, which building will provide your biggest bang for your buck um, in terms of the, uh, the practices that you implement. Um, then the fourth thing is to narrow your search even further um, for what to do. You can focus on a specific energy type that will give, us your, give you your biggest bang for your buck. Um, and then the fifth thing is to track energy use over time. You can evaluate if your practices have, um, have helped you decrease your energy usage um, and then also help you identify areas um, of possible um, trouble. And then the sixth thing is to use those B3 extras that I talked about. You now know how to use B3 and know what the tool can do for you. So the next step is to get started in making a, an account for your city or, or school. So the first thing to do is make a list of all of the city buildings or school buildings, associated square footage, usage type, addresses, utility account numbers, and occupancy hours of those buildings. You can create a B3 account using the website listed here. Um, on this form, you will uh, fill in all of your credentials as well as um, fill in much of the information that you've used in the list created in step one. Um, this form will be submitted to the white group, which manages B3, and um, it'll take a couple of weeks for them to get back to you with, um, with account access. So in the meantime, you can download and fill out a sample utility data release uh, from the CERTS website. Um, this data release will ba basically give you um, permission and access uh, to the meter utility data, um, which you'll send to, to your utility in the fourth step, and it'll also probably take a couple weeks for them to gather that data and send it back to you. Once you have that data, you can, um, and once you have your account, then you are armed and ready to um, start use, to actually use B3. You can put in your meter data, you can um, uh, finish up um, creating the building profile, um, and then go through the steps that I mentioned earlier. And if you have any questions, um, you're welcome to contact me, Katie, at cleanenergyresourceteams.org. Thanks.